All right, family, we're gonna go ahead and get started with this class, The Hunger and Thirst for Righteousness. Today, this is lesson eight, which is about thirsting for peace. Um, many of us may or may not understand this, but hopefully today you can come to the understanding that to hunger and thirst for righteousness coincides perfectly with thirsting and hunger and thirsting for peace. Because um, as many of us know, and many of us may not know, but there, there is no peace outside of righteousness. Leo says in this Bible that there will be no peace for the wicked. Like if you're, if you're not going towards righteousness, you're not going towards peace and you can want peace all day and all night and all the pieces you want in your life. But if you're not moving towards righteousness, there will be no peace. And so let's go ahead and get into it. We'll talk about it and go ahead and uh, tell this truth and we'll get off of here. It should be about 15, 20 minutes. Shouldn't be too long of a talk. This week has been um, a couple of shorter lessons, but at the same time, it's very powerful. So I'm um, getting a lot of good feedback this week. For some lessons. So let's go ahead and get into it and we will keep it pushing today. So in 1 Samuel 10, 17 and 19, it says, Therefore Samuel called the people together to the Lord of, of Mizpah, and he said to the sons of Israel, Thus says the Lord, the God of Israel, I brought Israel up from Egypt, and I delivered you from the hand of the Egyptians and from the power of all the kingdoms that were oppressing you. But you have today rejected your God, who delivers you from all your calamities and your distresses. Yet you have said, No, but set a king over us. Now therefore present yourself before the Lord by your tribes and by your clans. And so today he said something very beautiful right in the middle of this, okay, because he, he talked about how he, he delivered them from Egypt. But now he's also revealing just more truth of who God is in this moment. He said, who delivers you from all your calamities and your distresses? Now, many of us don't understand that some of us, some of us still believe um, in, in, in the world's perspective of stress and, and peace. And, and, and even in belief in the world's perspective of, of stress and peace, you have no peace with it. Literally, how, how many, in all seriousness, and, I, and I'm somebody who, who have dealt with a brain bleed, I've dealt with concussions in my life, um, I've taken depression medication, I've taken anxiety medication, um, I've smoked for anxiety, I've uh, been in therapies, I've done all, all types of things to kill stress in my life, and it's never left but by obedience to God. And that's something we have to understand in our lives is that you can translate and take the medication. You can do this. You can do that. But the reality is one thing is that you will never have peace unless you lean on the Lord to deliver you from your distresses in your life. And so let, let's get into this because I'm, I'm, I'm going to paint this picture and put this truth in front of you so you can see clearly just that there is no deliverance from distress in your life. But by God, it's not possible. What does it say right here? Who delivers you from all your calamities and your distresses? From all your, your calamities and your distresses. And so let's ask the Lord, because we don't lean in our own understanding this ministry. I don't know if, you, if you've seen that or not. I'm not just here to talk. Let's talk about the truth. Zephaniah 117 says, I will, I will bring distress on men so that they will walk like the blind because they have sinned against the Lord and their blood be poured out like dust and their flesh like dung. He says, I will bring distress on men so that they will walk like the blind because so let's break. If we, if we know English, let's, let's break this sentence down. He says, I will bring distress on men. He says, so they will walk like the blind. So he says, I will bring distress on men. That's what he did. He says, so they will walk like the blind. He's literally saying uh, 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 um, uh, what the product of him sending distress on men, what it does is so you will walk like the blind. But then he says, why? He also says why he sends the distress on men because they have sinned against the Lord. I don't think y'all understand that the only reason why you feel stressed in your life is because of your sin against God. The only reason you have distress in your life is because of sin against God. And so you have to come to an understanding and, 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 and not even understanding and belief. Because these are his words right in front of your face. He's literally telling you, this is why you have stress in your life. Because you sinned against me. And see, to understand that if the, the, the only cure, the only cure to your distress in your life is turning from your sin and walking in obedience to the Lord. 
the only cure. There is no other cure. I, I'm not going to sit here and lie to you and say, oh, 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 next year uh, things will be better because this, this, this and that's going to happen. No, if you don't turn your heart to God and in obedience, you will never have peace. And that's me just telling you the truth right now. That's literally me telling you the truth out of love. I ain't going to lie to you. What's the point of lying to you so you can feel good in the moment and you can be hurt later on? You're never going to find peace in this life if you don't turn from your sin and follow the Lord in obedience. It's not going to happen. And so here he is in Isaiah 48, 22. There is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. There's no peace for the wicked. No peace for the wicked. And so let me, let me go back real quick because because this scripture really is a mirror and it really helps you see yourself a little more clearly about your relationship with God and where you are for real. Because you can say all day that, oh yeah, I'm doing right by God and, 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 and this and that. Well, this is the truth. Is that if you have distress over your life, you are not doing right by God. Distress is a key factor to showing you that you have something you need to, you need to change and work on for your love for God to get right with him. This is a key factor in your life to let you know there's something I need to change. And you can blame this person. You can blame that person. You can blame everybody. But he says he says he says he sends distress because you sinned against the Lord. Your distress ain't about nobody else but you. It's about you and your belief in your heart. It's about you and your perception you're choosing. It's about you and the words in your heart you're believing in. It's about you. It's about you. And so this is just a reality check that if you don't have peace, you have some work to do with your relationship with God. Isaiah 48, 22, there is no peace for the wicked. Now, this is something that we all have to uh, come to understand in our lives that, that unless we're following Christ, who is righteousness, you are wicked. We're all wicked. That's why none of us have peace in our lives. Well, I'm not going to join myself in that group. I have peace in my life now. That's why I didn't have peace in my life because I was wicked and I wasn't being obedient. I wasn't listening. I wouldn't follow the only righteousness in this world. And so therefore, let me, <laughs> let me say again to you, there is no peace for the wicked, says the Lord. And that's just outright in your face. If you don't have peace or somebody around you doesn't have peace, you can baby them all day. But until they turn their heart to God and the Lord in obedience to his word, they're never going to have peace. You can pat your boyfriend, the boy, your, your boyfriend, your girlfriend on the back all day about how depressed they are and how, and how stressed out they are and all these things. But until you be honest with them and tell them until you turn your heart from your sin towards God, you will forever stay depressed and anxious and stressed out. There will be no peace for the wicked. None. Jeremiah 23, 17 to 18. He says, they keep saying to those who despise me, the Lord has said you will have peace. And as for everyone who walks in the stubbornness of his own heart, they say calamity will not come upon you. But who has stood in the counsel of the Lord that he should see and hear his word? Who has given heed to his word and listen? So on everything, come on, it's right here in your face. That this is a lie to look at someone to look at someone that you know is not walking in obedience. Somebody that you know is not turning their heart solely to God. Somebody that you know, you know, you literally know they are not walking. They're not walking their life. They're not walking in obedience. And you're still sitting there telling them, oh, everything's going to be all right. Oh, you're going to you'll, you'll, you'll find peace eventually. Oh, uh, um, nothing bad is going to happen in your life. God, God's got you. Stop lying. If you are walking in the stubbornness of your own heart, if you are despising the Lord, if you're despising his word, if you're refusing to follow his word, if you're refusing to believe his words, you will never find peace. And that's the truth. That's the truth. It's the truth you have to accept in your life if you actually want to find peace. You can keep fighting with it all day, but even as you fight with it, you ain't got no peace. Either you're going to believe and have your peace or you're not going to believe and, and, and reside in distress and anxiety and depressions in your whole life. Which one is it? 
So here we are, Isaiah 9, 6, for a child will be born to us, a son will be given to us, and the government will rest on his shoulders, and his name will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Eternal Father, Prince of Peace. So this is what he said his name will be called. Now, now, now okay, I'm, actually, I'm not going to go into that right now, because it's, it's too many disputing things around around that topic. But let me, let me, let me go into this. Uh, think about this. His name will be called Wonderful Counselor and Prince of Peace. If you're not listening to him, he's the only one that can counsel you to peace. He's the Prince of Peace. He's the only one that can show you what peace is and take you to peace and lead you towards peace. He's the wonderful counselor and the Prince of Peace. You got to begin to love the words that flow from his mouth because they are peace. They are eternal peace. They are internal peace. They are peace. And what does a counselor do? He talks to you. He walks with you. He, 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 he tries to give you guidance on uh, to go to your right, right and to your left or to go forward. That's exactly who he is. And he gives you guidance to, 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 to keep you at peace. Now here is our wonderful counselor and our Prince of Peace talking to us. John 16, 33. These things I have spoken to you so that in me, you may have peace. In the world, you have tribulation, but take courage. I have overcome the world. So he's trying to let you know two things right now. The peace he's talking about, he's not talking about a physical piece of people outside of you or your, everyone outside of you being at perfect peace with you. That's not the truth. Because everybody outside of Jesus Christ wasn't even in perfect peace with him. Some people still hated him. I'm sorry. You're never going to escape that in your life. Some people are still going to love you and some people are still going to hate you. Even if you follow Christ, people are going to hate you and some are going to love you. And that's just the truth. Now, the love is going to be greater and more genuine when you follow Christ. But you're still going to have people that hate you and you're still going to have people that, that love you. You're still going to have tribulation in the world. But what he's trying to tell you is that you'll have peace. The peace he's talking about is not a piece of, uh, of, 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 of the people in your life. It's an inner peace. It's an eternal peace in your heart. He's literally saying, I spoke to you. I've been giving you these words so that in me. In me, it's such a it's such an important uh, 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 phrasing of in me because you're gonna read this Bible a lot of times. In me, in Christ Jesus, in Jesus, uh, um, in the Messiah, in Him. What is in Him? In Him is His Word. He's trying to let you know that I've spoken to you so that when you stay in me, when you stay in my words, you listen to my words, you may have peace. In the world, you may have tribulation. Outside of you, there still might be a lot of uh, chaos going on and tribulation and, and things testing you. But inside of you, you listen to me. You always have peace. John 14, 27 says, peace I leave with you, my peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. So he's trying to let you know something. He says, that peace I leave with you. So as I leave, I, I, I came here, and as I go to my father, I've left peace with you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. The peace of God I give to you. Just as God sits on the throne in all, in all majesty and all peace, and in 1 John literally says that, that, that Jesus delivered to us the eternal life that was in our father, just as the, the peace that he has, he said, I'll give it to you. My peace I give to you. Not as the world gives do I give to you. So listen, this, this, this peace I give to you, the world can't give it to you like I can give it to you. You're never going to find stability of heart and peace in this world as I can give to you. Do not let your heart be troubled, nor let it be fearful. And so he's saying, come on, don't, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't let it be fearful because my peace is so much greater than anything in this world. My peace uh, uh, is triumphant against all tribulation in this world. My peace is greater. And we're almost done here today. I got three more slides for you. So as he said, these things I spoke to you so that me, you have, may have peace. Well, 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 let's listen to what he says about his words real quick. It is the spirit who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The very words that I have spoken to you are spirit in our life. It is the spirit that, who gives life. The flesh profits nothing. The very words I have spoken to you are spirit in our life. 
He's literally trying to let you know that, listen, just as I said, as I've spoken to you, that in me you may have peace. Now he's saying, listen, my, my words, they, they are the spirit. My words are the spirit. My words are the spirit. Now let me keep going, but the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things, there is no law. But look at that third fruit, peace. His words are the spirit. And he said a, a product of, uh, he said, if you listen to me, that these things I've spoken to you so that in me you may have peace. He says that his words are the spirit. And then he says the fruit of his spirit is peace. Come on, it's lined up for you right there. A perfect equation for you right in front of your eyes. If you want peace, it's very simple. All you got to do is listen to Jesus Christ and be obedient in your life. And you'll be like a house built on bedrock. And when the storms and torrents come, you will not crash. You will not collapse, but you'll stand tall. And so then lastly, I'll tell you this and we'll be done for the day. Isaiah 26, 3 says, the steadfast of mind, you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. The steadfast of mind, you will keep in perfect peace because he trusts in you. All you got to do is trust in his words and stay steadfast in mind in his word and in belief and, and staying sturdy and abiding in his word. And he said that he will keep it in perfect peace, perfect peace, perfect peace, where the stress doesn't creep back in in my heart no more. Perfect peace, perfect peace, perfect peace. We believe in this world that nothing can be perfect, but all things are perfect. With God. All things are possible with God. He's literally telling you, I can give you perfect peace. Perfect peace. They can't be touched. Perfect peace. And so, fam, we have to understand that, that it, 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 what was what's synonymous with hungry and thirsting for righteousness is also thirsting for peace. It's to thirst for peace is to thirst for righteousness. And so I hope everybody got something good today from this lesson. I hope it blessed you. Uh, we'll be back on here Sunday for our Sunday sermon. Um, perfect peace. If you want to, if you, if you, if you're thirsty for peace, you got to be hungry for righteousness. And if you're hungry for righteousness, uh, understand that peace is what's coming to you. Have a blessed day.